Yo, what's good YouTube fam? So just moving into a new crib and obviously a fresh new crib means a fresh office setup. I've been wanting to collaborate with my brother Tommy for Midas Tech for a minute now. Last year, we set up our little brother with a gaming and creative office space. This year, it is my turn. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel and this new office build came through as the perfect opportunity to team up and tap into his experience with desktop setups and YouTube content creation. In front of us is my office space. Now this is where all the magic is gonna be happening. So I have made sure to run ethernet cables all around the office. So basically every wall in here has ethernet cable. I have an ethernet cable right there. I have one against the wall. I have one against this wall as well as one on that wall. So no matter which direction or orientation I choose to put my desk, I'll have ethernet ports to be able to use the power of my PC. Every single wall in this room as well also has a power outlet. Right there, I did add extra outlets there as well. I can use it for things such as motion sensors, cameras, or, you know, basically anything that needs, a, you know, that kind of top-down view. Like the Akara sensor, right? My IKEA furniture was too basic for me and I needed a change. This new space is 11 feet by 8 feet, which is about half the size of my old office. For some reason, it was mission impossible to find any existing house with a floor plan that had a decent sized office from any builders in my city. And with the new baby on the way, we couldn't keep waiting. So we went for a spec on plan that one of the builders came up with during COVID for a work from home family. Join me as I transform this space into a four in one setup to kick off my 2024 YouTube journey. My plan for the office is to have four distinct spaces within it. The main desk, storage area, an overhead station, and a feature wall. The first thing I did was to reduce the footprint of my existing desk by getting rid of my IKEA Calbee 98 inch countertop that I had brought over from my old office. I was able to repurpose the countertop in my basement kitchen although i had to buy an additional 78 inch countertop piece to complete the setup luckily ikea still carries the carby now, one of the frustrating aspects of construction is the numerous upgrades that significantly increase the cost of your project I was surprised to find out that many things I assumed were included as standard were actually considered upgrades. One of such examples is the door to my office. Adding a door to the office was considered an upgrade, but the choices provided by the builders were limited and expensive. In most cases, you can find better and cheaper options outside of the builder's upgrade. Therefore, I decided to skip the upgrade and handle it myself. I considered all kinds of doors like French doors, accordion doors, pocket doors and even bifold doors but in the end i went with the 96 inch tall by 36 inch wide urban woodcrafts band door in white that i got from lowe's this door had everything i was looking for it was a solid core so it was really heavy and helps with keeping the sound down although this band door was pretty expensive and didn't have as many options as the 84 inch tall ones for installation my friend Achi, who is a general contractor, helped me frame the 54-inch opening into a 34-inch opening to make sure it can be completely closed. This created more wall space for the storage section in my office. I also added an additional electrical outlet on that wall. This outlet will be used to power power strips later down the line. Once the door was framed, Achi installed the door. The door came with all the necessary hardware. However, I found that the bolts for the sliding track were too large and created a significant gap between the opening and the door. To address this, I went to my local bolt supply store and purchased a sunken bolt. This helped reduce the gap, although it did not completely eliminate it. I needed the door to be as tall as possible because the height was very important to me to have an unobstructed path when I am bringing my light stands in and out of the office or carrying things in and out. The sliding feature of the door also means that it is always out of the way. Next, it was time to decide on storage options. Instead of using shelves like I have always done in my previous setup, I wanted something different. So I thought, why not use the Husky bench that I've been using in my garage for the past three years? I like how organized the bench is and it comes with caster wheels. I checked Home Depot's website and found the 46 inch wide bench that would fit perfectly on that newly created wall space. Installation was super straightforward and easy. It was pretty much assembled 
All we had to do was install the caster wheels. For additional storage, I used pegboards from IKEA above the bench. The pegboard offers various accessories with different configurations to hold different things. It can be easily reconfigured or upgraded as my needs change. I can even add more pegs later on if needed. I got this pegboard in black and the accessories in white, which offers a very nice contrast against my white wall. For the main desk, Tommy suggested I check out Secret Lab, this awesome Canadian company based out of Montreal that and makes this magnetic ecosystem desk. He just got this setup and loves it. He knows I'm all about cable management, so he thought this desk would be a perfect fit for me too. Thanks to Tommy, Secret Lab sent me a Magnus Pro XL seat to stand desk, which is a whopping 1770 millimeter long and 800 millimeter wide. But they also have a regular size option as well that's 1500 millimeters long and 700 millimeters wide. Setting up this desk was a piece of cake. It came in three boxes. I was so excited to get it up and running that I almost skipped the instruction manual but Tommy insisted we go through it step by step. I was already putting things together before it got to those sections anyways. It was basically just giving me the thumbs up. It just goes to show how easy and straightforward it is to install this desk. I did however make a small tweak by swapping out the caster wheels from my old desk to this one which makes moving it around a breeze. This desk is made of metal and can be adjusted to sit or stand going as low as 650 millimeter and as high as 1250 millimeter. So it is perfect for those times my son Cash wants to hang out in Daddy's arms. It has preset modes, which is perfect as I have to work with one arm when I have Cash in my arms. This desk was specifically designed with cable management in mind right from the start, which is seriously impressive. They've got this cool black metal top with a built-in cable tray and a management cable anchor for managing cables in different colors. And the best part is, they've got a whole bunch of accessories you can customize to fit your needs. I also chose the magnetic headphone stand, a black mag desk mat, and the mag RGB. The mag RGB is this magnetic RGB I see early this trip they developed in collaboration with Nanoleaf. If you follow my channel, you'll know I'm a huge fan of Nanoleaf. So that was a sweet bonus. It attaches magnetically to the desk as well. So I can completely get rid of double-sided tapes. The Mac desk mat is an oversized leather desk mat with magnetic ends to hold it to the metal top. Everything about this desk uses magnets and they are pretty strong magnets. For my monitor setup, I love screen real estate. So I went as wide as I could by going with the 40 inch ultra wide horizontal set Top, and as tall as I could with a 27 inch vertical setup with monitors both from LG. As a network analyst during the day, I do a lot of scripting and command line activities. A vertical setup will give me a much fuller display to view my scripts and codes. I also went with a dual operating system setup, a Windows mini PC from Geekcom and my trusty 2021 MacBook 16 inch M1 Pro. The LG dual up has a picture in picture mode that allows me to have dual input sources, allowing me to split the view and access both operating system at the same time. In order to further enhance this dual functionality, I went with my favorite keyboard and mouse combo of all time, the Logitech MX series, that is the MX Mechanical and the MX 3S mouse. Using Logi Plus options, I am able to set up Flow, which allows me to seamlessly move my cursor and keyboard between the two operating systems. With the Magnus Pro's built-in tray, I was able to easily route all the cables from the monitors and not a single cable in sight. Well, except for the single power cable at the base of the desk that powers the entire desk. The cable tray has an outlet inside of it which I plugged an extension box to power all the devices on the desk. As for audio, I plan on doing more voiceovers and my content moving forward. So we went with the Elgato Wave scissor arm and the Shaw MVUX 2U microphone. The scissors arm allows me for easy pull in and stow away of the microphone. This combo should help elevate my audio quality and also streamline the voiceover process. For speakers, Tommy chose the Audio Engine 2 Plus. This speaker has a really good audio quality. One feature I like about it is its ability to stream out of two of its inputs at the same time. This has allowed me to bring my Amazon Echo Dot first gen back to life again. This Amazon speaker has a really bad built-in speakers, but it does have an auxiliary port so I can plug it into the audio engines on auxiliary and I have my computer plugged in on micro USB and both audio works simultaneously. For decor and accessory, Tommy hooked me up with Groovemade products as it fits into my color scheme of black, walnut, 
and touch of gold. Shout out to GroveMade for providing all the accessories you see on the desk. I have the GroveMade mouse pad that has an older for a pen, the keyboard wrist rest and the MagSafe wireless charging for my phone, as well as a desk riser all in walnut and even a laptop stand as well in walnut. Now GroveMade not only carries walnut but gold as well, which was perfect for my touch of gold. So I got the gold pen and a notes taking kit with a touch of gold. I mean, even my MagSafe charger also comes with a touch of gold as well. The gold accessories are very heavy that I almost want to believe that this is real gold. Maybe it is real gold. I also got coasters for my coffee cup because I love my coffee. To complete the setup, I paired it with the Secret Lab Titan Evo Gaming Chair with the Neo Hybrid Leatherette. I have a love-hate relationship with leather. I hate how it can feel super cold or hot depending on the weather. And most of the time, I have to throw a blanket over my leather couch. But I love how easy it is to clean. However, this chair doesn't seem to have those issues, at least not from what I can tell so far. This chair is packed with a ton of comfort and customizable features like the 4-way lumbar support, a magnetic memory foam headrest, magnetic and customizable armrest with cloud swap technology. This chair also offers a complete recline and tilt adjustability. You can even customize the wheels, materials, and many more. To complete the look of the empty space above my monitor, my plan was to replicate a design I had seen on someone's page on Instagram. But when it came time to install, I discovered that these lines and shapes offered so much creative freedom. So why do what everyone else is doing? So we got cracking trying to come up with a design. There was a setback with the panels though. I had requested for an all black kit, but I ended up getting an all white kit. Coming up with a design isn't as easy as it seems, especially when you have to work within the limitations of the shapes and lines. The lines and shapes can all be joined at certain angles and points. So Dara suggested why not try to write our name. So we got to work trying to write it on the floor first to make sure it was doable. The panels used double sided tape to attach the wall. So you don't want to be attaching and removing it until you figure out exactly what design you wanted to go for because this could either weaken the tape or peel out your paint. We started out with the lines to draw the frame and use the shapes to add some skin to it and accentuate some of the letters. We ran into another hiccup. Remember when I said I saw a design on Instagram that I was going to replicate? Yeah, when it was time to order, I ordered a bundle pack that was specific to these designs. At the time, I didn't realize that it was going to be very specific. So when it was time to put together my design, we were short a bunch of linker cables and shapes. And unfortunately, at the time of the install, most places were closed as it was Christmas. So we had to proceed and make do with what we had with plans to adjust later down the line. We had two concerns though, the size of the pattern getting covered by the monitors all the time, especially in a stand position, and secondly, the white on white. So we decided to pivot to the other wall to place the design so it can breathe. But then we still had the problem of the white on white. There was also a new problem, the outlets at the center of the wall. During the original build of the house, I had a duplex power outlet and ethernet port installed at the center wall because my thought process at the time was to have a TV installed on the wall. So we explored the option of removing the outlets, but that would mean if I decided to change later down the line, then I wouldn't have those plugs and would have to redo it again. Plus there was also the drywalling, patching, modding, painting. All of this could easily take at least 48 hours just to fix that. This was time we did not have. So we went with the wallpaper route. The wallpaper seemed like a much better option, less work or so we thought. More design options though, shorter install time, and it can also cover the outlet and ethernet port. So we ran over to Home Depot and picked up a checkered style wallpaper and wallpaper glue so we could overlay the nano leaf lines and shapes on it. This was my first time installing wallpaper, but in my head, it seemed like paper should be pretty easy to install, right? It's just a bunch of big decals, but nope, it was definitely more involved than I had imagined. It requires a lot of precision and patience, but I think it was definitely much better than going with the painting, the wall alternative. After we did the first panel, it began to get easier and easier. It took about seven individual panels to fully cover that section of the wall. It wasn't perfect, but for a first timer, I think we did a pretty good job and you won't even notice the imperfections only until you look closely, which I don't do most days anyways, and it won't be visible in my videos. I capped off the electrical outlet and the ethernet port and covered it up as well under the wallpaper. Then we went back to the nanolip design. We measured the total height and width and measured it out on the wall to make sure we were centered. 
you have to start building these panels from one side and if you get this wrong you could easily end up with a design that is off centered then we slowly transferred it off from the floor to the wall one piece at a time we also took a picture of what it should look like in case things doesn't make sense anymore during the transfer process Once we're done with that wall, the space above the monitor was still blank. So we decided to install walnut floating shelves from GovMade and adorned it with a couple of items that have some meanings to me. So we went to HomeSense and looked around to find pieces that spoke to me. In my previous office, I had a painting of a lion. Dara, my wife, does not vibe with such paintings and it's more of those abstract paintings. You know those paintings with the mishmash of colors that only certain kind of people can interpret, right? I decided to give it a try this time, but browsing through the aisle for over 45 minutes with Tommy and I couldn't find anything, I constantly kept asking him what he thought about each painting and that was my first clue into knowing that this just wasn't me. I just couldn't justify it or bring myself to choose one. So I decided this is my office, one of the two spaces in the house that I have complete autonomy over my choice of decor. I don't have to care what anybody else thinks as long as I love it and that is all that matters. So I said F it and went to the aisle of funky paintings and inspirational texts. I needed some greenery in my office space so I decided to also go with the plants that had some meaning to me. So I opted for the bonsai tree. In some culture, it symbols peace and harmony. Immediately I saw the zebra in a suit. I knew immediately that this was it. It exudes the colorful and playful side of me in the midst of the seriousness. And then there is the sand of time, then there is the bug, you know, a couple of other mishmash of knickknacks as well. Moving on to my overhead station, I reused the legs from my old desk and put a white countertop on it. We then added a newer overhead kit. Now this kit allows for an overhead attachment of cameras and lights, so I can overlay the table with different colors of my choice. A very important component of the overhead station and the office recording is lighting. The original plan was to mount both my Nanlite Forza 500 and my Amaran 200X on the wall above the overhead station using a wall mount and a new rectangular softbox and the wall above my main desk with a Godox lantern softbox. But after laying out everything, I felt wall mounting the softbox of that size would just cramp up the space even more. So I decided to go with the C-stand with caster wheels instead. My non light is too bulky anyways. I'll probably explore options of replacing it with more Amaron lights as those are much compact and have the app control using the CIDOS link app. For the windows blinds, the original plan was to go with the zebra shades, but it would not arrive in time for the build. So we opted to install blackout window curtains using shower rods so we don't have to put holes in the walls. We also added some smarts to it using the SwitchBot Blinds 3. It was supposed to be a temporary setup but I'm kind of liking the vibes right now of the curtains and this might just end up being a more permanent setup. I installed a smart switch and paired it up with the PIR ambient light combo motion sensor from SwitchBot to automate the lighting in the room so that way when motion is not detected for a certain amount of time everything will go off and then when motion is detected then it will come back on again. Although things didn't go as planned but that's the case with most projects anyways you have to be able to adjust and adapt which we did throughout this project and it turned out amazing. Thank you.